if you have your Bibles, turn with me please to the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 6. <clears throat> I want to begin reading with verse 13. For whom, or when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely, blessed, I will bless thee, and multiply, I will multiply thee. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath of confirmation is to them as an end of all strife. Wherein God willeth more abundantly to show unto the heirs of the promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath, that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who has fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is set before them which hope we have an anchor of the soul, most sure and steadfast, and which endureth into within the veil. Whether the forerunner is for us, for whether the forerunner is for us, entered, even Jesus, made a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for this time that we can come together to worship you. And I pray, Lord God, that we've come for no other purpose than to worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord God, help us now in these next few moments to get our eyes up off the things of this earth and look full in your wonderful face. And when we do, uh, the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of your glory and grace. Almighty God, I pray if there's one here today who has never truly given their heart to you, never been born again, that this would be the day that they would open up their hearts and invite the Lord Jesus Christ to come into the heart, into the life, and save their soul. And for those of us, Lord God, who are Christians, help us to see and to understand as we worship you that there are some things that we need to do and there are some things that you want us to do with our individual lives and as the life of the church. So, Father... Help us in these next few moments now to see and to understand what it is that you want to do in the life of our church and in each one of us individually. We pray, we ask all of this in Jesus' name and for his sake, amen. amen. Now going back just a little bit in verses 1, <coughs> 1 through 8, the writer warns them to move on to maturity, to become mature Christians. In verse 9, he encourages them. In verse 10, he gives them words of love and service to the saints. In verse 11, the full assurance of hope. But now he takes a closer look at the symbols of hope and of assurance. First of all, you notice in verses 13 to 17, the promise. In Genesis 22, this promise was made with an oath. And since there was none greater, God swore by himself. Now, what promise is he looking, talking about? He's, the promise looks forward, of course, to a day Abraham and Isaac would never see outside of heaven. God said, I am going to bring my son to the earth and he will provide salvation for mankind. Luke 2.11 tells us that he was born a savior, a savior for all mankind. Christ died on Calvary's cross. He died there for you and me. But not only for you and me, he died for all mankind. 
He was born to be the Savior of the world and went to the cross and died on that cross that you might be saved and I might be saved. The word immutable in the King James Version means that he is in unchanging. He is consistent. He's a true God. He does not change. He cannot lie. You can trust him. In Acts chapter 1 verse 11 at the ascension, two men in white said, what, what do you stand here gazing into heaven? This same Jesus will come as you have seen him go. And he will keep that promise. He's also promised to us abundant life here and now. If you'll only trust him, if you'll put your life in, uh, in him, then he has promised abundant life. And to those who are truly saved, he has promised heaven. That one day we'll be on the streets of gold, that we'll be in his presence and glory. He does not change. He cannot lie. It's going to happen. So three things I want us to see here this morning. First of all, you'll notice that he is the anchor of our lives. He is also the forerunner, and he is our high priest. In verses 18 and 19, he's our anchor of hope. We have this wonderful hope. God does not change. He does not lie. You know what an anchor symbolizes? If you've ever been, uh, had anything to do with boating or been out, you know, or had a boat or what have you, you have an anchor. And when you put that anchor down, it holds that boat in place. It's safe. It's secure. Our hope, my hope, your hope is anchored in God. We need not fear the storms of life. And I want to tell you something as most of you already know. The storms of life will come. They beat up on you. They come. But we have an anchor that holds and that anchor is the Lord Jesus Christ. We have an anchor that will take us through any storm that might come. Our hope, by the way, is built upon nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. If you're a child of God, your hope is built upon that too. A story is told of a father who had a little girl he loved so very much. But he got arrested. He was taken to prison. And while he was in prison, the little girl died. Now, the family, his wife, mother of the child, did not tell this man. But when he got out of prison, the first thing he, uh, he heard was how his little girl had died. And uh, he was so heartbroken and all. He went to the, over the a bridge over the river. He was going to jump off, take his own life. And a man of God came by and said to him, listen, you don't want to do that because she's in the arms of Jesus. She's safe and secure. And the man came down off the bridge and said, if that is true, then it is true that she's safe, and I know that I'm safe too. Oh, listen to me. You know, here it is. As, you know, as we realize that our hope is built upon the Lord Jesus Christ, that we are safe, the anchor holds. God has given us this wonderful hope. It's, it's offered to man by a loving God who cannot lie, who does not waver in what he has said and what he's done. We're invited, by the way, to anchor our soul in the Lord Jesus Christ. I love that song, I can't sing it, but uh, I love it anyway. I'll anchor my soul in the haven of rest. I'll sail the wide seas no more. Anchor your soul in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's our hope. There is no better place than that. 
Notice now too, something else, not only is he our anchor, he, Christ is our forerunner. You know, this is a symbol of assurance as seen in Jesus Christ, the forerunner. By the way, Jesus has already finished the race. This word is applied by, to the first buds of spring or to scouts. You know, Jesus is our scout. He went ahead. He's already been through the valley of death. He knows what it is. He went into the Holy of Holies and he went before us there to open the door. When he died, the veil was split in two. You know what? That allows you and me to walk boldly into the Holy of Holies. If you're a child of God this morning, I'm going to tell you something. You have access to God. Why? Because the Lord Jesus Christ prepared the way for you. He's already been there, been through the valley. He bore our sins, our punishment. Nothing stands between us and God. The only thing that stands between us and God is our stubborn will that we want to do things our way. We don't want to listen, you know. But Jesus Christ, he blazed the trail. He went before us. He is our forerunner, preparing the way. By the way, Psalms 23, verse 4 says, so, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. Thy rod and thy staff. They comfort me. He's been there. He's already been through it. He's a forerunner, and we need to be following him. And when we do, we'll have no fear. Yeah, he's our anchor. He's an anchor in the time when the storms of life will come, and the storms of life, my friends, will come. Come to all of us, some way, some fashion. But if you have the Lord Jesus Christ, you have an anchor that will hold, I don't care what comes. Secondly, the Lord Jesus Christ is our forerunner. He's been there. He's already been through it. And we can trust him. We know he will not lie. We know that his promises is true. The third thing you see here then is he is our high priest. Not only did he go before us, he bore our sins, he took our punishment, and he extends God's offer of love to all of us. The word priest can mean bridge builder. And he, the Lord Jesus Christ, is a bridge builder that you can cross over if you'll just simply open up your heart and invite him to come into your life. He'll save you so because, listen, he builds a bridge for you to cross over. The only way, the only way that you'll ever be saved, the only way that you'll ever get to heaven, the only way that you'll ever be born again is by simply trusting the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who builds a bridge that you can cross over to be with him. You see. He has provided the way. What he said, what he has promised, he will do. You know, he does not lie. If you will repent, he will come right into your heart. He will save your soul. He has had to promise he's made. And he keeps his promise. He does not lie. When you trust him, he will save you. You know, if you have never done that, if you've never truly invited him to come into your heart and life, this is the time that you need to say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Save my soul. And the very moment you do that, he will save you. Because his promises is true. He cannot lie. 
Christians, <clears throat> let me say this to you this morning. God does not lie. He keeps his promise. One day, one day he is coming again. That promise he's made, that he has come again back to this earth. My question for you this morning, are you ready? If the Lord Jesus Christ came back right now, are you ready? I know probably you're saying, well, but Pastor, I have some children, they're lost. I have grandchildren, they've never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. I have some friends who've never accepted the Lord. Can you wait just a few moments before you come so I can do something about it? I want to say to you this morning, dear friend, if you're going to do anything about it, do it now. Don't put it off. Because he could come at any moment. God does not lie. He keeps his promise. And he said that he's coming again. The question is, are you ready? Are you prepared? Well, we don't know. Listen, we don't know when he's coming. The thing that we need to do is to be ready for that moment when he does come. He's our high priest, our bridge builder. He's our forerunner. He's the anchor of the soul. Listen, if you never truly trusted him, do it today. I know people today, they are, I already gathered, they said, well, I tell you what, Come uh, January the 20th, everything's going to be great. Everything's going to be wonderful. I got a feeling he was saying because we're getting a new president, a new leader, that everything's going to be right. I couldn't keep from saying, listen, don't put your trust. Don't put your trust in whoever's in office. Don't put your trust in the government. Put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He is the anchor. His promises are true. He cannot lie. And one day, he's coming. I pray that you're prepared. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have promised that you're coming back. And we look for that day. It may be today, maybe tomorrow. But we know that you do not lie. You keep your promise. So Lord God, help us to be faithful, dedicated, and ready when you come. I pray too, Lord God, as Christians, we'll be found faithful in our service to you, doing that which you have called us to do, doing it to the best of our ability. Father, I pray right now, if there's one here who has never truly opened up their heart, invited the Lord Jesus Christ to come in, as the Holy Spirit speaks to their soul, then right now, they'd say yes to the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, for those of us who are Christians, Oh God, I pray, I pray that we're faithful, dedicated. Our anchor is the Lord Jesus Christ. He's a forerunner and he keeps his promise. Help us, Lord God, to be ready if you came back at the end of this service, we'd all be ready, be prepared. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen.